This is part two of my series on classes and objects. And in this video, what we're going to do is create string representations of our objects. And we're going to do this by overriding the default methods that come from the object class. They are the dunder str. And in general, these don't have additional attributes passed in, although they could. And the other string representation is the wrapper. So as I mentioned in the first video, uh, these are string representations. The string dunder is generally considered an informal representation, while the wrapper method is considered a more formal representation. So let's go ahead and override the default. And usually these just have a return statement. And they must return a string. So for this one, I'm going to override it by returning the property and the value for an object. OK, let's try this one out. OK, so you can see that's what gets called when we print the user. OK, as I mentioned, it is considered an informal representation. The wrapper has a different purpose, and it is to be a more formal representation. So generally, what we want to do here is, as much as possible, create a representation that can be passed to other objects or other parts of our application and be seen as an object itself. So once again, we're going to pretty much just have a return statement. And there are lots of ways to do this. But I am going to just include two self-references to special dunder methods inside this class. And so we're going to get the dunder class and then the dunder name. Now, I could have just as easily printed the string user here. But this is going to be a little bit more compatible if I have other more specialized user classes that inherit from this class. I won't have to redefine the wrapper method inside those. And then we're going to get the attributes and their values. Once again, using a special dunder dict. And then uh, let's see what that does. So print. And to get it, I'm going to have to access wrapper. And uh, let's create a little separation between the two. And we'll try it. OK, so there we see the two string representations of our user class, one of them informal and one of them more formal. So you can see that it does sort of look like a object literal, as some languages would call it. OK, so as far as a bare bones class goes, these three methods are generally seen as required, although none of them is really required. All right, by convention, though, when you make a class, we generally write our own representations of these three methods. Now, classes are seen as new data types. And the new data type should have properties, like our username, password, etc. And they should also have specialized behaviors beyond those we defined in these string representations. So in the next video, we're going to define a few behaviors for the user class. All right, we're going to do things like calculate how old the user is. We're going to encrypt the password. And then we're going to write a method that also checks the password as users try to log in. So we'll see you in video three.